Good morning, students. Um, just for clarification, if you can see the slides changing, just let me know, please. Tell me if you can see the objectives slide now. Okay, good. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, a pleasant good morning, students, once again. It's a pleasure to have each and every one of you here on here this morning. Now, today, we're going to continue with the topic war. And so we'll complete our last two objectives, but we're going to also finish the principles of the United Nations. Remember, now that we stopped at the United Nations. So we're going to continue there, continue on from there, sorry. Okay, so let's go, let's roll. <clears throat> Okay, we know we did the violence and the non-violence. Give me a second, just taking the sound off of that. Okay, so let's continue on with our lesson for today. I will share the screen once again with you. I do apologize for that just now. So let's go, let's move forward. All right, United Nations. I'm just going through the slides a little quick. You see that screen moving fast. All right, we did who are we and we did the purpose. All right, so just a reminder, the United Nations is an organization that consists of various countries around the world creating a united front to work for world peace and justice. All right, so let's look at their principles. All members, all member countries are equal. So no one is better than the next. Even though persons may think that way, all member countries are equal. Secondly, all member countries must fulfill their obligations. So if your country is assigned to do a particular task or be responsible, for a particular organization within the United Nations, then they must fulfill, they fulfill their part. Now, in the event that they need help, and of course you can't ask, all right? Because no man is an island, okay? Now, countries must try to settle their differences through peaceful means. As we said before, countries must try to make peace all right don't use uh, violence or hostility try to come together to make some peaceful means and then also they must avoid using force or threatening to use force now we know as some countries in the world today um if they don't i would say give in or surrender so what the other country is asking, asking them to do, then they kind of use a forceful mean in nature to accomplish their tasks, which, which they shouldn't be doing, all right? Try the peaceful way and see how best that can work rather than using um, force or threatening actions. Because what happens is if you use force or threatening actions with me, then what happens? I retaliate. And I do the same to you. And then another country joins in, another country joins in, and then what we have? War, okay? No one can come to an agreement on understanding, okay? Everybody understands so far? Everybody understands the principles before we move on? Just give me a note saying that you understand the principles. Okay, let me chat. All right, awesome. Thank you, Tatiana. All right, good, LaShawn, Gabrielle, awesome. All right, let's go to our next slide. Now, we're going to talk about Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Can someone mention to me what they think human rights is? Oh, human rights, the equality of all women and men. All right, thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Star. Chrishell, awesome, awesome. All right, that, okay, so what we're gonna go, we're gonna do, we're gonna go through the human right, the, hu the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So we're gonna look and see at what each individual is entitled to, all right? So everyone has the right to life and to live in freedom and safety. 
So let's say it again. Everyone has the right to life and to live in freedom and safety. Okay? Next, everyone has the right to be free from harm. All right? So you see, we are entitled to play human rights. Okay? So we have life. We have freedom. We have safety. We have free from harm. Let's continue. Everyone has the right to be treated fairly by the law. All right? So no matter your crime, you have the right to be treated fairly by the law. Now, when you go through your process that determines your punishment thereon. Everyone should be considered innocent until guilt is proved. All right? So now you can say you're innocent, but once they find the evidence and witnesses and so forth, then you know you have to come forth and say the truth. All right? Especially if you know you did whatever the action is you're being accused of. Everyone has the right to marry and have a family. All right? So everyone has the right to marry and have a family. But not everybody wants to get married, right? And not everybody may want a family. But according to the declaration, everyone has a right to marry and have a family. All right? Any uh, questions about the declarations of the human rights we've discussed thus far? Anybody have any point of information or any concern or question they want to ask before we carry on to see the other rights? Okay, we have a question. Do we have the right to marry who we want? Now, we have the right to marry, to marry. But remember now, in this day and age, um, we know that we are supposed to be what? Man and woman marrying, right? So you have to respect that in line biblically, okay? Even though the fact there are some countries around the world making it legal for the same sex to be married, we know the right way is that you're supposed to marry man and woman, all right? You, have, you may have the right to marry, but you have to remember under that, under the right to marry, you know it should be man and woman. As I said before, even though some countries, you know, they have accepted and made the law and passed the law that persons can marry who they want. You can marry who they want, want the line of man and woman, okay? Um, some other question. What does it mean, the right to life? Meaning everybody has a right to life to live. All right? From the womb, everybody has a right to live. A right to life, sorry. Okay? Even though things happen unexpectedly, uh, everyone has the right to live, to life. All right? Now, even though you may not um feel that way but we are the ones to determine who has the right to life we aren't that's why it says everyone has the right to life okay so we can't determine if we should take this one life we shouldn't all right because only god gives life and god takes life you another question you think they would legalize that in the bahamas um i am not sure that they would but um, you know, we've been conforming to certain things around the world these days. And so uh, when we present um, matters and genders to the country at large, um, you know, there's always an underlining in the questions that are being asked, you know, and who knows, that may come in there. I would hope that we won't, you know, and so forth. But at the end of the day, um, you never know. We can only hope that it doesn't, but you never know. I hope that answers your question, Anonymous attendee and Gabrielle. Okay, we have another point. Uh, the quality, man, star, but what if you are focused to become married? Okay, star, you're asking, so what, but what if you're focused? Can you kind of read your question again for me? But what if you're focused to become married? Tatiana, so when blacks are persecuted from something and white are sent free, are they judged by the same human rights? Okay, Tatiana, question. So when the answer to your question is, is that 
they should be judged by the same human rights, but of course we know racism still exists in the world today. All right? And so in some cases, blacks and whites are treated fairly, and then in some cases, the same, the punishment a black person will get for that crime, a white person may not get because we know that racism still exists in certain parts of the world. Even though the law does not stipulate color, but when persons do their cases, in court cases, they do that. But what if you're, okay, star, now I'm understanding your question, star. But what if you're forced to, but what, what if you're forced to be married with somebody? Now I know in some cultures, yes, around the world, you are forced to be married with somebody. All right. You have no choice. You see up the person that you're marrying that day. All right. And that's just the culture of some cult countries. All right. But as in other countries, like for example, the Bahamas, we aren't forced to marry. We, we are, we, we're not forced to marry someone we don't want to marry. We have a choice. Okay, you have a choice at the end of the day that I do not want to marry this person. I hope that answers Tatiana's and Star question. You're welcome, Gabrielle. That's okay, Tatiana. That's, that's okay, Star. You're welcome, Star. You're welcome, Tatiana. That's all right. Even though you may have asked your question in, an, in a mistakenly way, that's fine. No question is a wrong question. Just ask it and I'll answer it. Okay, let's go to the other slide. All right, continuing on with human rights. Everyone has a right to own property and possessions. All right, so everyone has the right, if you wanna buy property, invest in property, that's fine. Possessions, if you wanna buy stuff, to not, but I say stuff like if you wanna invest in nice cars or maybe clothing or whatever stuff that you like, everyone has the right but you have to get it the right way, all right? So you just can't go and say, I own this property and knowing full well, you have no papers for that property. Or I can't say, I, I own these possessions when I know I never purchased those, all right? And then we have, everyone has the right to their own beliefs and to choose their religion, okay? We, you, um, everyone, we can't force religion on somebody. So if you choose, you wanna be Catholic, that's fine. If you choose you want to be Baptist, that's fine. If you choose you want to be Muslim, that's fine. Whichever belief and religion that you are comfortable with and you feel as though you want to be a part of that, you have the right to be. All right? You have the right to be. Now, yes, I know in some parts of the world, even though we have this declaration, some persons are persecuted for their beliefs and what religions they choose. All right? That's why I say, so in some cultures, it's fine. In other cultures, you have to be what they say you have to be. You have to believe in what they say you have to believe in, and you have to be a part of that religion, what they say that you have to be a part of. Okay, we have a question. Yes, they can call it model. Yes, Tatiana, yes. When some persons are model for their beliefs. All right. Everyone has the right to help choose the government of their country. That is why we have an election. All right. We have an election where we have, where we have vote. You choose for this party, that party. It's your choice. All right. And at the end of the day, you know, even though we have the right to choose the government and some may not be comfortable with the outcome, at the end of the day, everyone has the right to help choose in choosing the government of their country. Everyone has the right to work for a fair wage in safety, which is another point that's correct, all right? That is why we try to fight for, in our country, minimum wage, so that everybody can get a fair share across the board. Right, Tatiana. You're correct, Tatiana. It does exclude them. And, and lastly, everyone has the right to time off from work. So even though you may work a job that is open, let's say, five days of the week, um, which would depend on the establishment because some establishments you can be off one day through the week or two days through the week if you work like seven to eight days, seven days, sorry, seven days through the week. All right, so everyone has, a t everyone has the right to have time off from work so your body can rejuvenate itself and bounce back and be a productive person on the job. All right, um, we have a question. All right, let's go to the other slide. Everyone has the right to a healthy lifestyle and medical help if they are ill. 
okay? So everyone has the right to a healthy lifestyle and medical help if they are ill. So if you get injured or whatever is the case, you are entitled to medical help. Even though there are costs for certain things like registration costs or registration fee, you still are entitled to medical help. Everyone has a right to an education, which means go to school. All right. And that is why we promoted in the Education Act. Everyone has a right to education, to learn, to learn, to learn, to learn. Whether even though they may, even there are students that have special needs, they still have a right to learn. All right. That's why we have specialized teachers in certain fields to deal with certain level of to deal, to deal with a different level of students. All right. Everyone must respect the rights of others. All right, everybody must respect the rights of others. So even though you may not agree, you still must respect the individual, okay? No one has the right to take away any of the rights from others. No one has the right. That is in black and white. That is mandated. That is there. So no one has the right to take away any of the rights of others. Okay, let's see the question. Okay, okay, Lisa, I'm, okay. Yeah, and I know there are some countries who try to withhold um, education from persons uh, because they don't um, want them to move forward in life. You have some countries with, with, with wants to keep their uh, person, their, their people or their natives um, to a minimum level. They don't want them to move forward and develop themselves as individuals. So the less you know, the better for the country. You know, as they say, this person can gain more and have more because the less you know, the better the country, the persons who are in charge of the country can have, all right? And it's a sad case that those persons aren't afforded education. You know, they aren't afforded the education opportunity and that's just the way some countries are. And some persons, because they live there, they have to live and abide by the law. So, okay, Lisa, let me know if that gives you a little better understanding. Star, but it, would it be right to show respect to someone if they didn't show you any respect? Remember, Nasta, we have to do the golden rule. All right, even though it says the, the golden rule says do unto others, you have them do unto to do unto you. Yes, someone may not show you respect. But you have to be the bigger and the better person and say, I'm going to do the right thing. Because you never know by you being more respectful to them, it may change them and change their ways and then they may see they're wrong. All right? You don't do what they do. You don't copy their actions. All right? Your, your aim is to try to end that cycle so that, hey, maybe this person will come over and start to be respectful and realize that it's better that way. Okay, let's see if we can. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, that's it for the rights. Okay, Gabrielle, what if all parties get? Well, Gabrielle, if all parties get the same equal amount, maybe they have to do a recount. All right? No, they have to do a recount and to see if that's right or to make sure that all the ballots and so forth are right. Okay. Um. Is medical health something like life insurance? Not really, Gabrielle. It's not in that sense. Okay, okay, Lisa. Yes, we don't have the right to take it away from others, but uh, some persons do. And then, like I say, let's say for a crime action. All right. If in that case, if you want to be found guilty, then you know you have to do your time for the crime. All right. Yes, that's a crime, Tatiana. That's why they have the. Price control, they go out and they check the stores. And then if you are found guilty, you have to pay a fine to the courts or some stores are closed down because you're price gouging. All right. So, okay. So let's, all right. Now we're moving on to Amnesty International. <laughs> I agree, Tatiana. I agree. <laughs> all right. So the Amnesty International. All right. We're almost through. Now, the Amnesty International. Everybody's following so far? Now, the Amnesty International, it is a worldwide campaigning movement that works to promote all the human rights 
enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and other international standards. All right, so it's a campaign movement that works to promote all the human rights we just went through, enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and other international standards. All right, so let's look at what they are about. They campaign to free all prisoners of conscience. All right, so it abolishes the death penalty torture and other cruel treatment of prisoners that is why you see with certain laws um not laws i'm sorry um with the hanging and so forth because the amnesty international sees that as cruelty that's why you haven't seen it lately especially in the bahamas the hanging at one point we used to have it but we no longer we no longer have hanging because amnesty international sees it as cruelty they don't agree with the torture and so forth even though these persons might have done a really horrible crime as let's say murdering persons or or continuing murdering persons or whatever the crime is they feel as though they shouldn't be um dealt the cruel penalty the death penalty it ends political killings and disappearances as we see in some countries some persons are either kidnapped or they're politically killed based on who the person is or who the individual is all right so you'll see some persons in some countries some political one minute they're there, the next minute nobody can find them where they are. All right. Um, and it opposes human rights abuses by opposition groups. So you see the Amnesty International, it really campaigns on certain things. It even though they say the persons are prisoners, um, they still see them as human beings who are entitled to the human rights that be discussed in the previous slides. That is why they campaign for freeing all prisoners uh, to abolish the death penalty, the torture, any other cruel treatment of prisoners. It ends political killings and disappearances, as we said, and it opposes human rights abused by opposition groups. All right? So that is the Amnesty International. Everybody understands what the Amnesty International is about and what they're campaigning? Okay, so we have a question here. Tatian, how do they get the people to listen? Okay, what they, when you say the people, you mean the countries to listen or you mean the persons from the Amnesty International? Okay, how do they get the people to listen because the government doesn't have to even acknowledge them, the country's government? Well, like I once again, some countries, you know, they don't abide by the Amnesty International, all right? They just... As far as they're concerned, they are in charge of their, comp their, their country and they are entitled to do as they please. Like I can use here in the Bahamas. We listen, and that is why you would hear they, they would hear, you would hear a person say, well, the Amnesty International doesn't feel as though this should happen. So that is why um, certain things doesn't happen to the prisoners. Like in here, we could death penalty we have persons even though they get the death penalty but they be in jail for years till they die all right no one gets the electric chair no one gets the needle no one gets the hanging anymore no one gets the cat of nine tail the cat of nine tail remember with the whip with this to whip them and so forth and tail so all that we don't have that anymore here in the bahamas some countries around the world they still do it they still carry that out that is death that is their law and they even though the amnesty international is there as far as they're concerned, that is their law, okay? But in Bahamas, we don't do that anymore. We've stopped that with the cat and nine tail, and we've stopped the hanging. Okay, so we're going to go to almost to the end. Okay, so now, of course, we have, we must always connect our topics biblically, all right? And so we have a little biblical facts, little four biblical facts so that you can keep in mind and remember, all right? And these come in handy, these come in hand, especially when you're doing examinations and they make reference to biblical scriptures, you would at least know it and be able to uh, quote it and remember it. So if it says according to this scripture, so forth, you'll be able to answer, oh, I remember that scripture. All right. So keep these in mind and also keep it in, um, in no time when you're studying. All right, to use your biblical scriptures, use your notes and papers and every and handouts and questions and everything. All right.
right? Oh, we have a question. Do I do you think if they start the capital punishment again, the Bahamas crime will decrease? I think it will help in decreasing crime because at one point when they were using the cat and nine tail as history habit and uh, hanging, crime was down. I must say because persons knew that hey, if I did this crime, I'm going to get this punishment. I wasn't just going to sit up in jail for 30, 40 years. This would happen to me. So it was helping at one point. I hope that gives you some sort of answer question. I hope I'm saying your name right. All right, so let's continue with the biblical facts. All right, so we have fasting and human rights. Isaiah 28, verse 6 to 10. In this scripture, Jesus explains that God will not honor their fasting while they are mistreating others. So you can't want to be fasting and you know you're doing others wrong or you're not being kind and gentle. All right. And then we have, so even if you want to make notation of these scriptures, you can make note. A time of peace, which is Micah chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. In this, Micah the prophet prophesied of a time in the future free from war and conflicts and the establishment of God's justice. So there will come a time, as prophesied in Micah chapter 4, that the world will be free, free from war and conflicts. We don't know, but we know it's coming. Living and dying by the sword, the sword. Matthew 26 verses 47 through 52. When the soldiers came to arrest Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, Peter immediately grabbed his sword and defended. All right? So you see, living and dying, living and dying by the sword. All right. And then lastly, live at peace. Romans 12, verses 17 through 21. In this scripture, Jesus speaks against trying to get revenge on someone who has wronged you. All right. So we don't want to just, if someone wronged you, you don't want to get revenge on them. Because even though at that point in time, it might feel good and okay. But somewhere along the line, after you've calmed down and relaxed and realized that, you know, that didn't make no sense. I shouldn't have done that, all right? The aim is for peace. Even though, you know, a person might be coming at you and nogging at you and doing things and so forth, the aim is to promote peace at the end of the day. They may not respond then. They may not respond tomorrow, the next day. But at some point in time, they're going to respond, even though they come back to you 20 years later and say, I apologize for all the wrong I've done you, all right? So, oh, live and die by, remember now, the soldiers, but they always took carry with them, sword, and so forth. They always carried their sword with them everywhere they go. When they went to go arrest, they carried their sword with them. When they went to do this, they carried their sword with them. And what happened? All right. The same sword that they carried with them was the same sword that Peter immediately grabbed and had to defend and so forth. All right. So that's kind of living and dying by the sword. The sword, sorry. All right. Um, let me see who asked. Make sure. Uh, was that okay, Gabrielle? Okay, good, Gabrielle. All right. So let's go to our. That's it for the biblical facts. Everyone wrote those biblical scriptures down. Just okay, give me a nod and let me know if you wrote those down. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. All right. Good. All right. So let's go to give another question and answer. Okay. Thank you. We're gonna move on in a minute. Okay, so, all righty. Oh, okay, so, now, to wrap up my lesson, let's see, who, let's see who we're paying attention. So I'm going to put up some questions on the screen, and we're going to see who's paying attention. All right, can someone just define the term violent protest for me and give an example? Remember, it's three points. So just to find the term violent protest and give me an example in the chat. We're just going to go through the questions. You can even make none of these questions so that when you're studying, you can relate to these questions. All right, let's see some responses. Okay, Tatiana, I'm reading. Violent protest is using force to get your point across at all costs. Example, throwing tail bombing. Good. Very good, Tatiana. Awesome. Okay. Let's go to the nonviolent, explain the term nonviolent protests. 
Or somebody else. Okay, good. Kaylisa. Kaylisa, yes. Or Kelsey. Good. So you're understanding it. Awesome. Awesome. So what about the term nonviolent protest? Good, Gabrielle. Awesome, Carlos. Once again, good, Tatiana. Good, good. All right. Awesome. Now, let's go to number three. What is the role of the United Nations? What is the role? <laughs> okay, Tatiana, you're on a roll. The United Nations are the peacemakers of the world. All right, Tatiana. Um, give me, I know this is like a bonus in there. They promote peace. Good, Kristen. They promote peace. Awesome. Can someone tell me or identify three United Nations organizations or two? Let's say two. All right. Let's say two. It's a little bonus question in there. All right. Honesty. What else? I'll give you a hint. There's, ah, the FAO. Good, Carlos. We have two. Give me one more. There's one that deals with the coronavirus. UNGA. Awesome. You guys are on a roll. The WHO. I am so proud of you guys. World Health, World Health. Thank you, Franklin, LaShawn. Thank you again, Carlos, Gabrielle, Kristen. Awesome. You are a smart bunch. Now, what is human rights? What is human rights? Okay, Christian, now equal rights to all men and women. Good. Anybody can give me an example of the equal rights? The human rights, sorry. Give me some example of the human rights. I know it was a lot, but let's see if we can remember some of them. Good, Kristen. Education. Life. Good, Carlos. Tamari. Freedom of speech. Fair trials. Health. Awesome. Awesome. I'm loving these responses. Good star. To own property, possession. To choose beliefs and choose their religion. Everybody is innocent until proven guilty. Yes, yes. I have to give you guys a round of applause. I'm so proud of you. I am proud of you. I am so proud of you. You're doing an, ama you're doing an, ama an, am an amazing job. All right, and then the last one, give two examples. Well, you already gave the examples, and you said what human rights is. All right, you guys were on a roll. You were on a roll. All right, so that is the end of our presentation on war. But what I want to do is just read that quote again by... Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Star. <laughs> All right. So I just want to read that quote again by Martin Luther King. All right. I want us to just go over that quote again. Because I like the quote that he said. And, you know, right now in the world that we're living in, we all aim for peace. All right. Even peace in any establishment, school environment, businesses, businesses, organization, we aim for peace. All right. And so I'll just read this quote one more time. Violent ne violence never brings permanent peace. It solves no social problem. It merely creates new and more complicated ones. We see that, you know. Violence is impractical because it is a descending spiral ending in destruction for all. It is immoral because it seeks to humiliate the opponent rather than win his understanding. It seeks to annihilate rather than convert. Violence is immoral because it thrives on hatred rather than love. It destroys community and makes brotherhood impossible. It leaves society in monologue rather than dialogue. Violence ends up defeating itself. It creates bitterness in the survivors and brutality in the destroyers, Martin Luther King Jr. All right, so as you go through each other every day, let us try to promote peace wherever we go. The smallest act 
can knock down the biggest situation or the biggest problem. All right? It may not seem so at, at that point in time, but keep trying to promote peace in any which way form that you can so that we can help to slow down on all this war and this violence that's happening in our country and around the world at large. All right? So I will... Less, I will stop sharing with you, but I just want to make a few comments at the end. Thank you, Carlos. I appreciate it. I really appreciate doing that and um, imparting this knowledge with you guys today. All right. So, so I just want to thank you again, like I said, for being an awesome set of students. I enjoyed teaching you this topic on war. I enjoyed the conversation and discussions that we had. And please remember, when you go back on the site, look for the assignments, complete the questions, because make sure you put your name, your grade, and your school name, and upload the assignment. You can do it in Word so that you can attach it and send it off to the virtual school so that it will be sent to whomever your teacher is as a part of your grade. So try your best to complete the questions that are on the site and then upload it. Okay. Thank you, Tatiana. I do have a passion for it. And I will see you guys tomorrow when we will start a new topic. Okay. The questions are on the, when you go into the virtual learning site and you go into week one you'll see the topic war and then you'll see lesson notes and once you click on lesson notes just scroll down to the, the, the bottom and you'll see some practice questions everybody understands that okay good Kristen so be safe and enjoy your evening and I will see you guys tomorrow thank you again for being a wonderful audience thank you Steve. take care Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to another wonderful day of first grade. Are you ready to learn something new? Awesome! Now, let's put on our thinking caps and our listening ears as we get ready for today's lesson. Do you remember what an obstacle is? Correct! An obstacle is anything or anyone that stops or prevents you from doing something or moving forward. Can you give an example of some obstacles? Great job! Yes, a traffic jam can be an obstacle, as well as a fear of something can be an obstacle. Also, a physical disability can be considered an obstacle. There are many forms of obstacles. Do you remember the story of David? David had an obstacle. His obstacle was a person by the name of Goliath. Goliath was a huge giant. But David was not afraid at all. David had faith that God would see him through. David faced his obstacle, Goliath, and he overcame his obstacle. Do you remember an obstacle that you overcame? Were you ever afraid to read out loud? or to stand and give a presentation in front of your class? That was an obstacle. Or even dance in a group. That was an obstacle. How did you overcome your obstacles? Like many boys and girls today, people in the Bible experienced many obstacles. This is Samson. Samson was a special man of God. He was known for his great strength and his seven long locks of hair. Samson's obstacles came from the Philistines. They did not like Samson. They were jealous of Samson and his great strength. 
Delilah was a woman that Samson loved very much, but she was also a Philistine. She betrayed Samson. After Samson's betrayal, Samson was chained, thrown in prison, and his eyes were gouged out, so he lost his sight. Samson had many obstacles to face. After many months, Samson prayed to God every day, and he asked God to renew his strength. Day by day, Samson's locks grew, grew, and grew. And every day, Samson got stronger and stronger. One day, Samson regained all of his strength. He asked a little boy to lead him to the middle of the temple where the Philistines were having a great party. Samson walked to the middle of the temple. He pushed and pushed and pushed on the pillars of the temple until the entire temple fell in and everyone in the temple died. Like David and Samson, I am sure that you can overcome any obstacle that comes your way. One thing that David and Samson believed was that God would see them through. You can overcome anything that comes your way. If it's a fear of reading or a fear of making friends, or if you have a physical disability, just remember that through Christ, you can do all things. Change the way you see your obstacles and you would change the way that you go through them. I am so happy for the Bahamas Virtual Learning website. Even though I cannot go to school, my learning does not have to stop. Every morning, I go to ministryofeducation.com and click on the Virtual Learning Portal button. Next, I select my grade level. This learning schedule outlines my entire week. I navigate to the appropriate date. I always check the time to make sure that I am never late for classes. Then, I select the Join Now button. This directs me to a Zoom landing page. I am not the host of the session, so I will select Join as an attendee. Next, I fill out the class registration form. This is like a daily attendance. Present. Finally, I click on the link at the bottom when I am in my virtual classroom. I can ask questions in the Q&A and chat directly to the teacher. It's like having my own private tutor. If I miss a live lesson, I can come back to the page the following day and access the recording from the previous class. Good morning, Grade 7. And welcome to... But wait, there's more. I can explore all of the additional resources for that subject by clicking onto the lesson resources link. Here, I will find the PowerPoint from the lesson, additional lesson notes, and worksheets for practice. But the learning doesn't stop there. All of my option subjects are also available on the virtual learning website. To access the option subjects, I click onto an option block on the timetable and then boom, a whole menu of option subjects appear. I can access resources for computer studies, electrical, modern languages, visual and performing arts, and even cosmetology and carpentry. Want to know my secret? I download all of the resources and save them on my computer. So if the internet goes down, I still have my resources. There are even resources available for my little brother in primary school. Once mommy goes to the page for his grade level, she finds all kinds of fun and exciting videos and activities that he can use for each day of the week. Ah! Uh -huh.
the silent E after the consonant, it becomes sight. Wow, you guys thought of it all. I kind of like this virtual learning thing.